Hello and welcome, Rookie Card Collecting friends. Victor, the Rookie Card Specialist here, coming at you a couple of days before the National, wanting to share with you some game plans and some logistics that I'd like to share with you that I think you may or may not find very interesting. I know some of you are probably in route to the National already. I've been hearing some folks already getting ready to get on their plane tomorrow morning. Other folks have left already today on Monday uh, to drive down this way. So there's a lot going on. The wheels are definitely in motion. We are at the eve of the national. Um, but I want to get into a little bit kind of my game plan, what I'm going to be working on as far as pickups and that sort of thing. Just a wide variety of topics here. Just wanting to keep everybody in the loop um, with what I'm doing. Um, first and foremost, though, I want to uh, remind everybody about the Sports Card Hall of Fame that we are doing uh, over at the Sports Card Hall of Fame Network channel. It is uh, your opportunity to vote for up to 10 cards. I'm going to leave a link to that um, ballot in the description of this video. So be sure, if you have not yet, to vote for that. I'm really excited about that. Can't wait for the outcome. Also, um, recent pickups. This is going to be this loan uh, card. This is the only one I've gotten here in the last week or so, but it's the uh, 1997 Skybox EX 2001 Tim Duncan rookie in a PSA 9. This now I'm doing the set registry for all of his rookie cards, and this makes number 14 of 18. I would love to pick up the other remaining four that I need at the national, that would be awesome. And then um, that registry would be complete. I also picked up a body cam today. So I'm hoping that it says uh, Amazon says that it's going to deliver it to me tomorrow. Um, it's kind of like a body cam that sits right here in the middle, kind of like what the police officers wear, but I would love to just utilize that for some content and I don't know how I'm going to do it yet. I'm just going to be like learning on the fly. So um, we'll see how all that works out. I also wanted to share with you guys, uh, you know, my, my hotel situation, I changed it up a little bit. Instead of staying one night out there, I'm going to stay two nights. And uh, I just thinking about things, how they're going to look and unfold and the plans that I have for the evenings after the national. I just, I just don't want to be driving uh, an hour and a half in the middle of the night uh, just to come back the very next morning. I'm just going to go ahead um, just with all the construction that's going on this time of year. It's just best that uh, I'm just going to stay out there Thursday night and Friday night and come home uh, late Saturday night, I think. Also, the weather around here, uh, it, you know, it all depends on your liking in that. But I can tell you, you know, I feel bad for the folks down south because we've been uh, all summer long. We've been um, low 80s. It, it's been like an absolute paradise here in the Chicagoland region while everybody down south is, is kind of baking in the heat. Right. Um, but for the the heat wave that is happening down south has expanded into our region and this is going to be the first week this summer where the entire week is going to be in the low to mid 90s, which you can probably bet your bottom dollar that it's going to get up to the upper 90s. And here, since we're really close to a body of water, it's going to be humid. So it is going to be hot, you guys. So uh, expect to sweat, expect to, uh, you know, put on some deodorant. <laughs> Uh, but expect it to be uh, uncomfortable at times because when we get into mid to upper 90s around here, it's 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 brutal. Um, I also wanted to talk a little bit about traffic. Uh, if you are coming from northeastern states, uh, kind of like New York, Michigan, or Ohio, you know you're you're more than likely going to be taken through the Borman Expressway, uh, which is like the main vein here that gets you from state to state. Uh, but that Borman Expressway is the one, the road that I take on a daily basis. And I can tell you that this road right now, it's, it's brutal. It's all, it, almost all of it is under construction. When you get into the, when you enter the Northwest Indiana region, 
uh, it, it just really starts getting ugly. And I can tell you, if you're coming down to Borman, you're going to be taking Borman westbound, right? Obviously to 294 and that'll take you straight into the uh, convention center however you know there's there's pockets of construction all through there so for it's typically a 50 minute drive right now it's about an hour and a half drive uh one way uh, from my house to there but i can tell you you know once you pass i-65 on the borman expressway the, the highway breaks up into like four lanes. I highly recommend that you stay on the far left lane, which is going to be an express lane. You don't want, you want to stay away from the mother three lanes because it, it, it's typically backed up pretty good. Um, so your best bet is going to be to stay to your left. Also, if you're coming, you know, uh, from Southern states, any, anywhere like you know, Kentucky, Tennessee, Virginia, you know, I, I highly recommend, you know, you can probably take I-65, come just straight up through the main vein of Indiana. Uh, it's usually a pretty nice trip, just straight up into Indiana. And, and I would take, uh, I would try to, you can take I-65 straight to the Borman, but again, you're going to fight through all that construction. I would stay away from the Borman if you can, but I would just take I-65 straight up and I would go to 231 and take 231 to 394, and that's going to take you uh, right to 294, which is where the Donald Seven, uh, where the convention center is at. I know I'm throwing a lot at you there, but but you 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 understand once you get on the road. Uh, parking garage. I do know somebody reached out to me asking me about the parking situation over at the Donaldson Center. I want to share with you this Google Map images real quick. Uh, hold on one second. All right. I did want to do a video. I wanted to take a trip up there. I told my wife this past Sunday, hey, let's let's take a trip trip up to this convention center. And I, I wanted to do a little video just walking around the convention center to kind of give you guys uh, like a little tour. But uh, it was just raining really, really hard out here Sunday. So I, uh, I stopped uh them plans. But I says, uh, you know, my wife really wanted to go. I says, I can just pull it up here on on Google. And I don't, I don't think you'll be able to see my, uh, my mouse, but here on the right hand side of the screen here, you're going to see the Donald's, uh, the convention center right here. Um, over here at the bottom is a, is a garage. Uh, but that garage is typically for the vendors and for the signees. So that one is typically not open to the public. Now, if you can see here, all these little pinned points where it says parking, they're, they're like scattered all over the place. A lot of them you probably will not be able to park because it's typically parking that's reserved for some type of business. Uh, what they do is, and when you get close to the convention center, you're either going to go road down here at the bottom of the screen where my mouse is. It says Balmoral Avenue. Or up top here where it says West Burn Ma I don't even know how to pronounce that. West Burn Mauer Avenue. Those are the two main veins that's going to take you to um, North River Road. And North River Road is where the convention center is on. So right here, um, as you come up North River Road, is uh, you're going to get escorted by the police. And they're going to be pointing you to this garage, this big garage right here in the center. Uh, once you get there, it's $15 a day. And um, you could go in and out. Just when you go out, make sure you go through the um, window uh, and tell them you're coming back and don't go through the automated one. But here's the thing, uh, you know, with the parking, if you do, if you did buy the super VIP package, uh, you will have a, a parking pass in there. That'll be good for the whole week. So you want to hold on to that if you get it, your super VIP. Um, but this is, uh, you know, $15 a day to me is reasonable, especially when you consider parking uh, in downtown Chicago. Parking in downtown Chicago will cost you a small fortune. So uh, uh, especially on the weekend, on the, on the week, Friday, Saturday and Sunday, parking in Chicago uh, goes up quite a bit. And so you get ready for that or just take an Uber. You're probably better off doing that. Ubers, I'm sure we're going to be scattered all over this convention center all week. But um, that is the, the parking situation. And then I wanted to share with you guys my want list. 
Okay, so here's my um, current want list. I this is something I created probably a couple national nationals ago, but I did went ahead and up updated it. I what I did was I removed uh, some of the cards that I had already gotten, and I went ahead and updated the prices. Um, now. This is all basically, like I mentioned in my last video, my, my focus is going to be on PSA set registries, right? And these are some of the set registries that I'm going to be working on. So for here on the, and on the Kobe Bryant one, for instance, I'm going to be working on that. And I went ahead and, and did the high price, low price, and current average price. And those, that's kind of the three things that I use. Um, Tim Duncan, the Roberto Clemente basic set registry, that I'm going to be working on. And I've also priced them as far as the grade that I'm looking for. Uh, that, Cause that's going to be an important piece, right? Uh, I got to figure out what grade I can afford and then figure out the average price. Uh, and these are my hall of fame players, post-war hall of fame player set registry. I'm only going to be working on the cards from the sixties and seventies this year. I have everything that's pretty current with the exception of the new guys, but I'll, I'll pick those up eventually. Those are the easy ones, but I'm going to be looking for some of the stuff. I'm going to kind of be focusing on the stuff from the 1960s and, um, and then the set registry for the top 100 of the eighties. As you see here, I still got to price this one out. I'll probably do that tonight after I record this video, um, I'll, but I'll be updating the list on, on this, this one as well. Now you might be saying, man, I thought you had some of these cards. I do. Uh, but I've, I'm one where I do not use one card for multiple set registries. I'm one where, um, I will only use, uh, like, like in 1980 tops, Ricky Henderson. Uh, I already have that card in the post-war hall of fame set, but I will pick up another one for this top 100 of the eighties. That's just, a preference of mine. That's just how I, I like to do it and want to do it. Uh, is this, is, if this is something I pass on to my kids or grandkids, I want them to be able to take that entire, um, uh, set registry. They can take it in its entirety to an auction house and they can try to sell it that way or try to piece it out or whatever that way, just for my collecting preference. This, that's how I like to do it. Um, so basically that's going to be my focus. Um, also, you know, I, I do plan on doing a little bit more um, arbitrage shopping through bargain bins and that kind of thing. Um, that also, this stuff is really only for reference. I am one where I'm, I'm kind of more free spirited. If I see something that really catches my, my eye, something that really um, that, that is not in included in this list, I'm going to go ahead and, and try to pick it up. Um, that's just, kind of the you know i, I don't want to be so dogmatic on 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 my want list right i also want to be able to spread my wings if i choose to um but other than that guys hey safe travels to all of you uh try 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 to get some sleep <laughs> and uh, get some rest you deserve it uh you know most most of us we work very hard at our jobs, we work very hard and we're very committed with our families. Uh, we work very hard at our content creation. We work very hard with our collections. And it's time now, you know, for us to take a break, uh, get some rest, get some uh, fun and, and, and kind of just enjoy the week. So hope to see everybody there. Look forward to, uh, I, I will more than likely be on uh, doing some live shows popping up here and there. I don't think I'm going to be releasing any content personally on my channel. I won't be doing that until the following week. Uh, when I get home, I'm going to have my body cam footage. I'm going to be able to come home and, and slice and dice something up and make something really nice um, quality content. Um, so I won't be releasing that. I'm going to take a break from making content, but I will be hopping on live on a couple of channels here and there just to say what's up and uh, just kind of give people a vibe of, of everything going on. Um, so, you know, with that said, guys, I'll see you there. And if you're not going, I'll catch you on the next one. Buenos nachos, muchachos.